Welcome to the first episode of our podcast, Exploring the Unknown, where we'll talk about different things in Louisville that you might not know about. We're your co-anchors, Dani Vergara Gongora and Emma Westerman, and in this episode, we'll be talking about Ballard High School's origins and hear firsthand stories from some of their teachers. Today, we are joined by Ms. Pointer. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, you're welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, like how long you've been teaching here at Ballard, what you teach, um, and yeah. I am a math teacher, and right now I teach mostly pre-calculus and AP statistics, which is very fun. We get to work with M&Ms and goldfish and all kinds of fun stuff. And I have been a teacher here since the year 2000. Interesting, interesting. We were we were looking at the yearbooks and it's to see like how like it was back then based in like the pictures and stuff like that and then like how we know Ballard now. It was it was very cool. It was very yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely an interesting comparison. Ballard was first opened in 1968 and it was actually built on an old pig farm, which is really interesting. It was initially for students in grades 7 through 9th and each year a new grade level was added, so the first graduating class was the class of 1972. And there was also kind of a weird schedule with morning classes and then afternoon classes. How do you think these shifts would play out with today's students? I don't imagine we could do that in today's world. We have so many um, credit needs that, that the students have to have that I think if we went to half day, um, we wouldn't be able to meet all those credit needs. Plus, you have all of the fun extracurricular mm -hmm. type things that you do and the electives that you guys get to do, like <laughs> broadcasting, that is um, a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 because, like, before, like, before we were seniors, it was just, like, you only needed, like, three math credits, but you had to take it, like, all four years. But now it's just, like, oh, no, you have to get four math credits. Mm -hmm. Even though most of us, like, we start with, like, most of us take, like, Algebra 1 in, like, middle school, mm -hmm. but they don't count that one. Well, so, um, so, like I said, we were, like, looking at yearbooks and stuff like that, and we saw that there were so many, like, m other clubs and, like, activities and stuff like that that we don't have. So, like, some of them were, like, they were, like, doing, like, float competitions during, like, homecomings oh, and yeah, stuff we like used that. To, we used to have um, the floats the, the each class would design a float and we would go through the neighborhood we would drive through the neighborhood and and throw candies and into the little kids and the neighbors really liked it it was it was a sad day when we had to stop doing those but but yeah we that used to so cool. yeah, it, it was fun it was fun yeah could, I can't imagine doing that with the no. amount of students that we have here now no no it's just like the the joy in their eyes and like the pictures and like having like fun together and like doing things together was and then, okay, we saw a picture of a bonfire. Was that something else that, like, that, like... During homecoming, yeah, they would do the bonfire. So, like, how would that work? Um, they would bring a lot of wood and, and, <laughs> and out in one of the fields. I think all of the fields now that we have are um, either softball or oh, okay. they've all been incorporated into some kind of play or practice field. So we don't really have that many open fields anymore to be able to do that. So was that just, like, a thing, like, was that for, like, everyone, or was it, like, for, yeah. like... during homecoming, during homecoming. And homecoming, I mean, it used to, homecoming meant homecoming um, in the fall when um, the college students would get on break and they would come home and um, go back to their high schools and see a football game and participate, you know, that it was homecoming. That's what it was about. Oh, that's what homecoming is. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't I didn't grow up with the whole homecoming mm -hmm. culture and stuff like that. So it's been very interesting to experience it this these last four years. Um, um, yeah, and there was in one of the yearbooks we looked at a picture of like um, a bunch of people in a car and like they were all super dressed up and we just assumed it was for homecoming, but we didn't know. It was like the front cover of one of the yearbooks yeah, yeah, or the yeah. first page of one of them. Like, the yearbooks, like, back then, they were, like, so decorated and stuff like that. They were, like, super, like, intricate and ingenious. Like, they had, like, cutouts, and they were, like, hand-painted. I don't know what it was, but it was it was very interesting. One of my favorite ones that we looked at, the senior pictures, it was actually, like, 
seen your pictures taken by like a, an actual photographer and like they went to the courtyard and like places at Ballard and they were all very unique. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to wear cute clothes. We we used to we used to do that um, instead of doing the drapes. Yeah. Um, I'm, my son graduated from another high school and they they were still doing those. They would go to a, a photography studio and wow. do a set of senior pictures. I think that's so cool because it's so individualized. And yeah. very cool and then well we said there were like a lot of clubs and stuff like that so like with um with you being the sponsor for me alpha theta like can you tell us a little bit about like about that and like how long you've been doing it and like how it's changed oh i don't know how long i've been doing it <sighs> <laughs> too too long many years um me alpha theta came here um we had a, a student who moved here from i believe she came from texas and she was really enthusiastic about having the club. So um, Miss Bean got it started, mm. and then um, she handed it off when she was doing some other things. And it's just a club where it's for math um, students who want to help other people understand more math. So we do a lot of tutoring. So with your experience, not only with Alpha Theta, but just as a teacher in general, how would you say the student environment and like the students have changed since your time being here? They're attached to their phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the hardest part. That's yeah. the hardest part is to get people to, to set down their phones because you, you do have to concentrate um, on what you're doing um, in class and if, if you want to learn how to do something. I um, I remember seeing something that um, Stephen Hawking's mother had said. It was that if he did not get the disease, he would never have been able to do what he did because the disease forced him to sit and think. And we're so distracted now that I don't think any of us have time to just sit and think. So. That, that's the hardest thing now in, in, in getting students to getting their attention. It's just, okay, you gotta put that down. I know it's a whole lot more fun to play Candy Crush, but we really can't do that right now. One of the, like, the biggest things that like, has affected like, school environment, like, especially was like COVID. Mm -hmm. um, for us, like, it was in our freshman year, becoming from like freshmen to sophomores and it was just like how like NTI like just some people just weren't technological like people or just like some just didn't have the resources or well for any reasons so like um how was like teaching like math and NTI like for you horrific <laughs> <laughs> in one word um no we teachers had a rough time um we went and had to, you know, switch 180 degrees. I learned how to start a YouTube channel. I learned how to, you know, record everything on an iPad and I learned how to post it. And we learned Google Classroom, we learned Meet, we learned Teams, we learned uh, Zoom. We learned all of this stuff really quickly. And um, it, was, it was rough, it was rough. And then, you know, it's so much easier to um, turn the camera off as mm -hmm. a student and just kind of, you know, watch TV or <laughs> listen to music or do something that's a whole lot more fun than, than listen to a math lesson. But, um, you know, there were still students who were dedicated to understanding what was going on and, and they paid attention. Um, but, yeah, we're still recovering a lot of that mm -hmm. background knowledge um, that is still missing, and we're, we're having to to pull all that back in. Yeah, because I know for us it was sophomore year that mm -hmm. was almost completely on NTI, and that was Algebra two. Yeah. And that was really difficult to learn online, especially when it's like I'm in my bed, but I have to get on yeah. school. Yeah, yeah on school. You're relaxed. Yeah. School isn't yeah. really the thing you're thinking about. So, yeah, I understand. I understand. And then, then to come in, into my class and I'm like, <laughs> know what to do. Yeah. But it 
is definitely an experience. Something that I've been thinking is like, we know like back like a few years ago, it was a lot more common to like actually get together with people and like do like studying and stuff like that. Study um, groups. And, like, and study groups and like do projects and stuff like that. What do you think maybe like is the thing for like why like we don't do that anymore? I don't know why you all don't do study groups. I think that I think they're very important, but probably, you know, disease <laughs> is why we've been staying away from everybody. So um, that's one thing. Um, but, you know, certain classes lend themselves to more projects. Um, I try to do a few things every now and then. Um, you all missed out on something last year that I got to do again this year um, because we went into COVID one more time. We had to go into that short NTI time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but now we have more time and as, as skills are built back up and we don't have to go back over as many skills as, as we do now, we'll have more time for mm -hmm. um, the projects and applications, which are a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun to swing um, softballs around the room and see what their, their period is and frequency and all that good stuff. Yeah, that sounds cool. What is one of your favorite memorable experiences at Ballard? Either like teaching or just like being here at Ballard? When I came to Ballard, um, one, of the, one of the most <laughs> welcoming things was the way the faculty um, got together. Um, were you here when Miss Yonkin was here? Yes. Okay, she was a big driver for that. And we would do all kinds of, of fun things uh, as a faculty. We would, we would do cookouts in the, in the parking lot before a game. Um, in the fall, we would, um, in the spring, there was always a plant exchange. So, we, you know, teachers would dig up plants that they're trying to divide in the spring, and we would share them with each other. It was just, it was just very welcoming. It was a very welcoming place. That was another thing. Um, kind of going back to the yearbooks a little bit, the bio pond. Ever since we've been yeah, here, yeah. that has been like off hands, like no yeah, touching, yeah. no one's allowed over there. And in those yearbooks, there were pictures of people studying out by the bio pond, and that was like advertised. Yeah, it was just like, need a quiet place to study? Go study at the bio pond. It's just yeah. like, it's outside the building. We're not allowed to leave. Yeah, yeah, things were, things were a, little, a little different. We, um, I used to take geometry classes out there, and we would, do, um, wow. we would do trig lessons out there doing measuring shadows and figuring out how tall everything was. Yeah, that's really cool. I would love to do that. <laughs> I don't do geometry anymore. Oh, um, well, we can we can figure out some statistics. That, what is the calculations for? I don't know. Oh, we have plenty of fun things we do with statistics. Um, are there any changes that you want to see at Ballard, whether it's in the community or the environment? Not that I can not that I can think of. I would I would like to go back to more of a, a collegial environment as far mm -hmm. as the faculty goes, but we are so separated from each other yeah. and um, we have meeting schedules, but our meetings are, are with our own little group of mm -hmm. people that we meet with instead of with everyone. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, have more fun things. Yeah. And, and they're working on it. They're working on it. They're starting to do um, more activities and try to get people more involved. Like like staff retreats, uh, we have never. Well, I mean, we call what we do in the in the summer. We call it a retreat, but if I've, I've taught at a parochial school as well, <laughs> and that's not a retreat. You know, the retreat is you go to a mm -hmm. place and 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 you stay there for four or five days, and and it it's a different experience. In our business class, and one of we went to we went to Lou City, and then they were like, "Yeah, we like offer we offer like um, like work retreats or something like that, or like I know like all of these different places, like an arcade or something. They we offer we were retreats. there at Lou City. We did ours this summer oh. there. Yeah, oh, that's cool. cool. So it's just like those like being able to like bond experiences and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. 
Um, so we know that sometimes like um, ballet students come back. What has been like some of your experiences like seeing like old, um, old, old like students? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a secret. After about two years of you all being gone, I don't remember your names because <laughs> I've had to learn 150 uh -huh. new names every year. Understandable. So um, when people come back, I often say, oh, hi, sweetie, how are you? Because I have no idea what your name is anymore. But, um, yeah, it's always good. It's always good to see people who I haven't seen for a while. Um, you know, you see them out in town a lot as a teacher. Yeah. Uh, you know, my kids would always get, what do you, you know somebody here too, Mom? You know someone? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. I remember last year, I don't know why this is such like a prominent memory, but um, these two girls came back and they were wearing their cap and gown and they were walking oh, around yeah. school to see all the teachers. And it was like in the middle of transitioning from classes and they were just there in their gowns and I thought that was pretty cool. Aww. It is, it is. Um, well, to wrap up, is there like any, any things that like you would like any tips that you would tell students or just like anything else that you would like to include in this podcast? Put your phone down. <laughs> That's the biggest thing now. Put your phone down. Pay attention to what's going around, on around you. That's life. <laughs> Anything else you would like to say, Emma? I think good. What about you? Um, yeah, I think this was a, a very good, successful first episode. Thanks for, thanks for being here, Ms. Pointer, and thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in. Till next time. Bye. Bye-bye.